Hello everyone. Welcome to my SQL crash course. In this video, we're going to talk about how to perform some basic database operations using SQL language. Before we start learning about SQL, let's first talk about some concepts and give you guys an overview of the whole database management system. So first of all, what is the database? Basically, a database is a collection of structured data. And uh, it is used to persist data for software applications. Uh, no matter it's a web app, desktop app, or a mobile app, uh, most of them are using databases for data storage options. And um, there are also different types of databases, um, such as relational database, document-oriented database, and graph databases, and so on. In this video, we're going to focusing on the relational database because it is still one of the most widely used database system in the industry. And uh, it's sort of like the fundamental database to learn about. And uh, once you're familiar with relational database, it becomes much easier for you to uh, branch out to learn other types of databases. Next, let's talk about relational database. So RDBMS. RDBMS stands for Relational Database Management System. It organizes data in a table format with rows and columns. And tables can have relations using keys. In other words, multiple tables can relate to each other using a reference called key. And we'll talk more about this later on in the video. Um, RDBMS uses the structured query language, which is SQL, to operate the data. There are many different RDBMS providers, such as MySQL, Oracle DB, uh, Microsoft SQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, and so on. And in this course, we're going to use PostgreSQL to demonstrate the SQL language. So here's a little information about SQL. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is the standard language for RDBMS. It is used to perform tasks such as creating tables, uh, insert, retrieve, update, and delete data from tables, um, so different RDBMS providers have slightly different SQL syntax, but most of the standard commands are the same. So even though I'm using PostgreSQL in this course, you can still apply what you learned to other relational databases. It will work the same. So the last bit of information is about PostgreSQL. Uh, PostgreSQL is an object relational database management system. It uses the SQL language, but also support custom data types and methods. It has great extensibility and scalability. It also has multiple GUI tools to help visualize the data, and we'll be using one of them later on in this course. It is cross-platform, which means no matter what kind of platform you're on, uh, what kind of operating system you're on, you can install PostgreSQL and run it. Last but not least, it is free and open source. OK, so that's a brief overview of the database management system and what we'll be using in this course. So enough about the slides, and let's jump right in and get started. So first things first, let's head over to the PostgreSQL download page, which is postgresql.org slash download. As I mentioned before, PostgreSQL is a cross-platform database so it supports most of the major operating systems on the market. Uh, right now, I'm on a Linux machine, so I'll be showing you how to uh, install Postgres on Linux. But if you're on Mac OS or Windows, um, I believe there are installers available for these operating systems. Uh, so you can just use the installer and follow the instructions step by step. Um, but if you're on Linux, um, there are little extra steps that need to take to get installation working. Uh, so I'll be showing you how to do that. Uh, right now, I'm on a Debian distribution. So let's cl click on Debian. Um, if you're on other distributions, there are also documentations available. I'll, I'll put the link in the description just in case you need some help. Um, so right here, um, first things we need to do is we need to choose our Debian version. I'm on Debian 10, so let's click on it and choose Debian 10. Uh, next is to create a file called pgdg.list in our sources.list folder. So let's copy this path 
and copy. And let's head over to terminal and then CD into that directory. So paste it in and hit enter. Um, next, we need to create the file called pgdg.list. Um, so if I do um, ls, as you can see, I already have this pgdg.list file created. Um, but if you don't have that, uh, you should do sudo uh, touch um, pgdg.list. Okay, so use the touch command to create the file. And then after you're creating the file, uh, let's open it with sudo uh, nano pgdg.list. So hit enter, it asks for the password. So now, as you can see, I already have that line added in my pgdg.list file, but if you don't, you should copy that. So you should copy this line um, into your pgdg.list file. So paste that in here and then hit control O to save the file and then hit control X to exit out back to the terminal. Okay, now we have added the pgdg.list file. Uh, we can add the signing keys, the repository signing keys by copying the first line in step three. So let's go back and paste it in and we hit enter and wait a couple seconds. Uh, it will tell us, okay, so next we need to update our repository. So let's copy that and go back here and paste and hit enter. So it will take some time to update all the repositories. Uh, so once it's done, uh, we can just go ahead and install Postgres. So here's a list of all the available files are included in the distribution. And we are going to need the PostgreSQL-11, which is the core database server. And we're also going to need the PG admin 4, which is a graphical administration utility. We're going to use PG admin to visualize um, our queries and the changes in our databases. Okay. So uh, let's copy this line and copy and go back to terminal. So now the updating is done. Uh, we can do sudo and then paste in the apt install. So I already have Postgres installed, so I won't install this. Um, but if you don't have it installed, you should uh, use this command to install PostgreSQL. And then after you install this, we also need to install PG admin four, I believe it's called. Yeah, it's called PG admin four. So install PG admin four as well.